What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video, uh, last week we talked about creating some straight stairs and the ways to do that in SketchUp. Now I'm going to talk about a few ways to create some spiral staircases. Um, before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I put together to uh, basically give people a quick, easy way to get started with SketchUp. It's basically the equivalent of a two-day in-person um, introduction to SketchUp course. So if you want to learn how to use SketchUp fast, get into some things like uh, basic tools and then getting into more advanced methods, modeling for layout, interior design, um, an introduction to photorealistic rendering. If you're interested in all of that, you want to get some more training, make sure you check out the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so let's start off with the most simple method, which is basically creating a circle and then creating a series of wedges. And so the way that you're going to do this is you're going to create a circle um, and you're going to set the number of sides in it to the number of steps that you'd like. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the circle tool by tapping the C key and then I'm going to type in a value of 12 and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to create a 12 sided circle. And then I'm going to click once to set my center point and I'm going to type in a radius value. And my radius value is going to be whatever I want the width of my stairs to be. So in this case, my radius value is going to be 4 feet. So I'm going to type in 4 feet and I'm going to hit the enter key. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a circle that's 8 feet in diameter, 4 feet wide. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a line from the center to the edge of two of these points. So you can see how this drew a circle that was made up of 12 segments. And so once we've done this, what we can do is we can come in and erase out the rest of our circle. And what and now we're going to take this step and we're going to extrude it into 3D using the push-pull tool. So I'm just going to tap that P key, then click on this face, and I'm going to give this a distance of, we'll call it 4 inches. We'll call it a 4 inch rise. And then we're just going to right, or we're just going to select this wedge, right click on it, we're going to make it a component. And you can call it something like spiral, stair, tread, or something like that. And then make sure the box for replace selection with component is checked and click the button for create. And so once you've created that, what you have is you have this wedge shape. Um, and so now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create a series of copies using this wedge. So I'm just gonna use the rotate tool. So I'm gonna tap the Q key to activate that tool. Then I'm gonna put my mouse over the center point and I'm gonna come out and click here. And then I'm gonna tap the control key to activate copy mode. And then I'm going to click right here. So you can see how that creates a copy right here. And then all you have to do is type in times 11 and hit the enter key. And that'll create 11 copies of this circle or uh, this wedge. So you can see how I have a series of copies of this wedge right now. Well, now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a bunch of copies of this whole thing using the move tool in copy mode. So I'm going to select this whole thing. I'm going to tap the M key to activate the move tool. Then I'm going to click once on this point, and I'm going to tap the control key to activate copy mode. And I'm just going to move my mouse up to this point right here. And in this case, I'm just going to type in times 11 again and hit the enter key. And I realize that this isn't giving us a very, um, our, our step width here probably isn't very uh, precise in this case. So you can kind of mess around with that. But in this case, um, for this example, it ought to be good enough. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're just going to do a shift click and we're going to select all of the wedges that would go up in a stair stepping fashion. So you can see how I'm just going up one and over one and I'm just holding that shift key and I'm just clicking on the different wedges. And so you can see how now I've selected this all in a circle. Well now you're just going to hold the shift key down. You can see how I get the little plus minus sign next to my mouse and I'm going to click and drag a box across this. And what that's going to do is that's going to deselect the stairs that I had selected and it's going to select everything else. And then I can just hit the delete key. And so you can see how when I hit the delete key, what that did is that deleted out all that extra stuff. And so in this case, probably what I'm going to do. And so then all you do is you could just come in here and you could just create a line up for your handrail and actually I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust this spacing in here a little bit because I don't really like this. So I'm actually going to go back and when I create my initial copy, so I just did a bunch of undos there, um, probably what I'm going to do is instead of moving this so that it's this point right here, 
I'm probably going to do it so that the step up is actually 8 inches. So I'm doing that same thing and I'm going to type in times 11. So that creates 11 copies. Well what that's doing is that's just creating the same thing but with more spacing between your steps. And you can kind of mess around with this. You don't necessarily have to do it exactly the way that I did it. I'm just trying to get a little bit more realistic spacing on my spiral stairs. So then we'll do the same thing. Hold the shift key and drag across this. There we go. And so you can see what that did is that actually gave me some spacing between my uh, steps. So, and like I said, you can do this either way if you want to. So if you decide, for example, that you don't want this gap in here, that's fine. You just need to make sure that the number of steps that you have in here works for that. So you're just gonna have to kind of work some stuff out when you do that. But then what you can do is you can come in here and you can just draw a handrail and we'll just arbitrarily pick a point right now. And so we'll just draw a line that's three foot up. And then all you have to do is draw another line to the next point. And you can see how since these are all components, this adds this all in here like this. So that gives you a path that you could use like pipe along path or something like that to extrude, a, to extrude something along. And if you wanted to, you could also come in here and you could create like a center post. So... If you wanted this to be a spiral staircase where everything just comes off of this post, you could just draw a circle right here and extrude that up. All right, so method two is very similar to method one. So I'm gonna make this 24-sided uh, circle in this case. But what we're gonna do this time is we're actually going to draw two circles instead of one. So in this case, I'm gonna draw a 10-foot circle. And then I'm gonna kind of inference back to this center point. And along this same path, I'm gonna draw a six-foot circle. And so we're going to do the same thing we did before with the wedges, but instead of having these come to the center like we did before, we're going to use the points on these circles to generate our wedge. And so the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in this circle, and I think before you draw these lines in here, you have to do this, but I'm going to come in this circle, I'm going to click on the edge, and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to use the option for find center. And so when you select on this line that makes up this circle, this will put a guide point in here at the center. So we can use that in a second in order to create, or in order to rotate our stairs. So now what I can do is I can erase out these circles because I have this center point that I can use. And so then we'll just do the same thing where we'll just uh, make this a tread. And in this case, we'll make this one go up We'll call this one six inches. And we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to create this copy. And in this case, I'm gonna create a series of copies the same way that we did in the last example. And then we're just gonna select this. We'll deselect this guide because we don't wanna make a bunch of copies of the guide. And we'll just use the move tool in copy mode to copy this up. So in this case, I'll copy this up Twenty four times. And so you can see how this gives us that full circle. And then we'll do the same thing where we hold the shift key and drag a box across this and then we'll delete out our extra. So you can see how this gives us a wider spiral staircase. Then you can do the same thing where you can come in here and you can just draw your line up in order to get kind of your guide point. So in this case, the only thing that you might do a little bit different is you might do this on both sides. So you can see how that can be used to create more of a wider, more circular spiral stair. So the next method is the first method we're going to use that uses an extension. And so I'm going to use an extension called memory copy to create a series of copies over and over again. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with this 24 sided circle, I think. And we'll do the same thing that we did in the original spiral stair, um, just to make this easy. So probably what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to make this five feet. And then we'll do the same thing where we'll use the center point. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to draw a one foot line out just so that this doesn't go all the way into the center. And then we can do the same thing where we can erase out our circle. 
And so I'm just gonna push pull this up. We'll call this four inches again. We'll select all of this and we'll make it a component. And then in this case, because we're gonna use the memory copy extension, which I'll link to in the notes down below, all we have to do is create one copy. So we'll use the rotate tool in copy mode to make a copy right here. And then we'll move this up so that it's kind of in line. And then all you have to do is you can right click on this point or, or on this component. And there's gonna be an option down here called play it again. And what the play what the play it again option is going to do is that's going to let you repeat a movement on a component. So that's what memory copy does. So in this case, we click on play it again with this with this component selected and then we just click on this one over and over and over again. And what that's going to do is that's going to repeat this as many times as we click on it. So I could click, sit here and click on this all day and it would just keep creating copies of it over and over and over again. So you can see how that makes this really easy. And remember, since these are components, we can still come in here and draw our railings in here pretty easily. So that's another option if you don't feel like messing around with the circles over here, memory copy is a great option for that. So the next method isn't necessarily as much a way that we're gonna create spiral stairs as it is a way that we're gonna create a solid railing. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this staircase that we created before as our example. And so what we're gonna do in this case is we're actually gonna come in here and we're gonna use the extension curve aloft to create a solid railing around the outside of this. Okay, so what we're gonna do on this one is we're actually gonna start off and we're gonna make a copy off to the side. And it's very important when you do this that you select all of this and you make this unique. So what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna make a whole bunch of changes in here because you can see how these are still linked because they're all copies of the same components. So you can see how when I made that change, it changed over here and over here because I made copies of components. So what you wanna do is you wanna select all of this in your copy, right click on this and click make unique. And so once you made this unique, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna redraw your uh, stair lines. So in this case, what we want is we want these lines to run up and down on the outside and the inside. So instead of them sitting on the top here, we want them to be on the outside. And so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw a pair of three foot lines. And then once I've done that, I'm actually gonna come in here and I'm gonna erase out the stair geometry itself so that all I have in here is these lines. So all I'm gonna have left is these vertical lines. And so once we've done that, all we wanna do is we just wanna draw a line along each one of these points. And you can see how since these are components, when we draw this in one of these, it's drawing them in all of these. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to just get these vertical, or these, uh, these lines that are kind of running down along our spiral. And then once we've gotten those lines, we're actually gonna come in here and we're gonna delete out our vertical lines. So you can see how what that does is that basically leaves me with a whole bunch of components just kind of running in this spiral shape. And this is why we wanted to, um, make a copy because you can see this is a destructive way that we're doing this and that we're deleting out all the component functionality. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select this, we're gonna right click and we're gonna explode it so that these are actually in here as raw lines. And then we're just gonna draw a vertical line at the end of each one of these. So basically what we're doing is we're closing this in so this has like a full frame in it for each one of these. So you can see how I have the two separate spirals in here. Well, in this case, what I can do is I can triple click and I'm gonna use the extension curve aloft, which I'll link to in the notes below. And we're gonna use the option for skinning of shapes. And you can see how when I use the option for skinning of shapes, what this does is this fills this in with a face. So we're gonna do that for both of these. So you can see how now we have these solid shapes in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and reverse the faces. And so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna select these two objects and we're just gonna move them into place over here. So if you remember, this started off with a base point right here. So if you find your bottom point and move it to the midpoint of your bottom stair, then this ought to line up pretty good. And you can see how 
with this stair in particular, and I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm gonna make this set of components unique so that they don't change my original stair over here. But you can see how right now, and you can come in here and you can erase out your extra lines as well because you don't need those anymore, you just need your steps. You can see how this doesn't exactly work because it's kind of inside your stair at the moment. And part of that's just because we drew these lines from this point to this point. So you can see how it's kind of behind here, but that's okay because we're gonna use the extension joint push pull to give this thickness. So in this case, and I'll link to that in the notes below as well, we're gonna use this to just thicken this wall edge. So you can see how I can click and drag in order to do that. And you can see how I can just give that thickness. And so you may wanna come in here and use a more precise value. Like let's say we want this wall to be six inches or something like that. And you may have to play around with this to get the exact results that you want. So and you can see how this needs to get moved down a little bit. Well, all I need to do is just use the move tool and I can just move this straight down. So you can see how I selected this face. Then I clicked on this point and I click down. And you may have to adjust some of this for your workflow. So um, obviously we're getting into some kind of custom creation type stuff, but you can see how this allows you to create this thickened wall. So when the other thing you may wanna note when you're doing this is when you use joint push pull, you probably wanna use the thicken finishing. So what the thicken will do is instead of deleting your original face, it'll leave it in there. So when I push pull this in, if you have the other option in here for erase original face, then it'll erase your interior face, which you do not wanna do. So, and then I'm just gonna do the same thing where I use the move tool to move this down. And so you can see how I have this interior and exterior wall. So that's how you can create a spiral staircase with walls in here. And again, you may have to make some adjustments. And then the final method I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about using the extension 1001 bit tools. So we talked about 1001 bit tools a little bit last week. There's probably some other extensions that do this as well, but this actually has a spiral staircase creation tool. And before I use this, I'm gonna save a copy of my model. So basically all you have to do is you can just click on this option for build standard spiral staircase. And what that'll do is that'll allow you to set everything from your step width to the angle. You can set the number of risers that you have in here, how tall the whole thing's gonna be. Um, you can create your different handrails and also set if you want intermediate rails or not. And it has two types built in here as well. So you can either build the type that has a gap in between them, or you can also build the type that just kind of steps up. And then you just come in here and you just click build staircase and you just click. And it's gonna take a second to create all this different geometry. But you can see how that creates your spiral stair really quickly and really easily. So depending on the kind of stair you wanna create, it may be easier to just use an extension. And there's a couple other ways that you could kind of do this. You could use Flowify or like a shape bender or Fredo Scales radial bend tool to create a straight stair and then bend it in a circle. I'm kind of running out of time in this video. Um, and the, the problem with those is I have trouble getting those to go in a full circle. So there are a couple other extension methods that you can use that I'm not going to get into in this video. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about some of these methods? How do you create spiral stairs in SketchUp? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.